Okay. So uh, let me start out with a reminder of uh, um, uh, a quick review of a circuit. And I think the quickest way to do it is through a, a circuit example. So I'm going to use this example circuit that you see on the screen there. Um, so I guess it's kind of hard to guess from how it's built what the circuit looks like. So let me draw the uh, circuit on the board. So call this um, circuit to review. So what I have built on that breadboard is this circuit, um, which hopefully um, isn't too unfamiliar. It's a circuit consisting of two registers, as you can see here. Circuit consisting of two registers connected in this particular way. They're connected at a single point. And they are connected in such a way that I'm applying a voltage difference across across both of them. So there's a voltage difference being applied here um, through use of this function generator. So let me say, all right, it's going to be um, the square wave thing that the function generator is generating. That, uh, that's actually what you are seeing on the oscilloscope right now. That's uh, the um, function generator signal. If I turn it down or up, then you see it changing. That, all right, um, so it's a pretty simple circuit. Two registers in series, R1 and R2. And right now, all you're doing is measuring the voltage that you're applying, so it's not doing anything funny or interesting. So you can start to get to some more interesting things when you measure the voltage output across different parts of the um, circuit. So let's say I measure the voltage output this way at these two points, V out. So, you know, call this V in. So I have some amount of voltage that's being applied to the circuit. Call this V in. And I guess this is the question that we are trying to answer in any circuit question we have. What is this V out as a function of V in? So suppose you are asked this on an exam, like I could have asked you on exam two. Uh, how would you go about answering this? Chris? You would add up the resistors and use Ohm's law to find the current, and then use that current across R2 to find voltage off. Yeah, so add up the resistors. So the important thing here, um, that I want to highlight before we get into the weed of actually doing it, is finding the current. The important thing here is finding the current. Right? Once you know the current, then you can answer the rest of whatever it is I'm asking. So your entire goal here is, okay, trying to figure out what is the current in terms of the given quantities, so that I can use this to find this, figure out this. So I'm going to go the long way. Um, so in this circuit, it's simple enough that you can do exactly what Chris was suggesting. Add this in series, that's the equivalent resistance, um, or use Ohm's law to find the current, and then multiply this current with the resistance, stem from Ohm's law that gives you this voltage difference. Right, you all know how to do that. Um, but because that method will not generalize easily, to the next circuit that I'm going to have you look at, I'm going to apply the more general um, circuit solving approach with the Kirchhoff's rule that we learned earlier. So you know, as I'm going through this step, I want you to remember that this is the circuit we, we want to know how to analyze. This is the circuit. So RC circuit intro. This is the circuit that we want to know how to analyze. Um, it's going to be a, essentially a copy of this circuit with some important changes. So I'm still going to have register R here. And in fact, I'm even going to have the same power supply here that's going to provide me with some square um, wave. Now the important part that'll change is that this part, instead of being a register, it'll turn into a capacitor. 
And my question will still be the same. What is this output voltage, V out? In terms of you know, whatever parameters that we decided then will be sufficient to describe this. Then, so this is, the, this is what I want to put, put on your horizon so that it makes sense the sort of long, torturous steps we are going to go through for this relatively simple question. Because, um, so you know, for this circuit, what Chris suggested will work. You add registers in series. Can you add a register and capacitor in series? Like, how, I mean, they don't even compare to each other. So what we are going to need to do is we are going to have to set up a system of equations here. So that's why I'm the method I'm going to use here is the um, uh, set of steps that actually gave you a system of equations. That's the Kirchhoff's rule, right? So, so that's the approach I'm going to use here, so that when we go to that circuit, we can use the exact same approach. So, um, so yeah, let me um, write, sketch out what we are doing here. So, uh, so we are going to write uh, Kirchhoff's rules. Um, what do you get? Can you use the junction rule here? Do you see any junction that's non-trivial? I mean, it's a single loop, so you can define junctions, but you're just going to get trivial equations. So, so I'm going to end up, um, for simple circuits like this, I'm just going to end up using loop rule. Yep. Um, yeah, so let me do that. So let me define the loop. So, uh, wrong color. So the loop will go, yeah, definitely wrong color. Sorry, let me get my orange pen. Um, so let me call this my loop. So this is my loop. So applying the loop rule, this is what I get. Loop rule says the voltage change as you go around the loop should add up to zero. All right, so let's start from this point on the loop. I go across the power supply. Let's just say um, this is negative and positive end. So as I go across the power supply, I'm going to gain voltage of V in. And this might actually be a function of time this time. Before we are dealing with a constant voltage, this time we are saying, all right, it can be time varying. Um, I go across the register R1, what's my voltage change? Yeah, minus the resistance times the current. That's the, you know, that's Ohm's law. So minus, I prefer to write I first. So I R1. And then you go across another register. So that's the same expression. Minus the same current times R2. And come back here. So you complete the root, loop. That's equal to zero. So this is your one equation that you need to solve for. Uh, simple enough to solve this for current I. So let me solve it for I. Then what I end up with is current I is equal to, so imagine moving this over, divide up by R1 plus R2. Then I get V in as a function of time, divide by R1 plus R2. Okay, now I know the current. Then I use this current to calculate this VR. Um, as Chris said, you know, multiply VR with the, uh, sorry, multiply the current with the resistance. So that's going to be my VR. Um, VR will be the current times the resistance R2, or uh, plugging this in, it's uh, R2 over R1 plus R2 in as a function of time. But I hope, I'm hoping you know, all these results sound familiar. It's the voltage divider equation that you have seen in homework, and I thought you have seen it elsewhere too. But like, you have seen this multiple times. Like, this is a familiar uh, expression. Let me ask you this question. Um, if I plot both V out and V in at the same time, 
on the same graph, how do you think they will compare? Like, uh, does V out rise at the same time V in is rising? Does it drop at the same time? Are they synchronized? Like, when you look at this, is there anything here that says V out is not synchronized with V in? Right? Uh, so what's this ratio, R2 over R1 plus R2? What kind of quantity is that? It's a proportion. It's a sort of unionless uh, coefficient because it's a ratio of resistances. So it's going to be on some number. Looking at this, it's actually going to be a number less than one because denominator is guaranteed to be bigger than numerator. So looking at this, you might say, OK, so V out is going to be smaller than V in. But other than that, there's nothing that says how V out changes as a function of time would be different from how V in changes as a function of time. Like I'm not seeing anything there that suggests otherwise. So let's you know, turn it on and see. So I turned off channel B here. Let me turn it back on. So channel B, pretty sure this is. OK, so, um, so let me turn off the channel A button so that you can kind of see both the channel A and B. So channel A, so channel B. Uh, the, in, in this particular circuit, both the R1 and R2 are 1 kilo ohm registers. So R1 is equal to R2. So you would expect uh, this ratio is 1 half. And I set this to the same scale. Like That looks like about 1 half, right? And if I decrease the input voltage, then they decrease together. And let's uh, you know, expand the time scale and see if they you know, start and end at the same time. Oops, the other way. So mm, you can really see it. But like, this is the biggest scale I can get without things changing. Like this seem to you know, ri rise and drop at the same time, right? Yeah. So, this is a simple circuit. There's nothing complicated that we are expecting here. So uh, now what I want to do, and you know, spend the remaining 20 minutes or so to talk about, is how will this circuit look? How will the output signal look like if I replace this uh, register with a capacitor? So this is one of the capacitors I have. It's a 10 microfarad capacitor. This is one kilo ohm register. And those are kind of a nice numbers to work with. That's why I picked them. But so when I have this circuit, this circuit here, hook up the exact same voltage supply, voltage output, see what we get. Um, I guess I could ask what you would expect to get, but I don't know how many of you have any kind of intuition for circuits. Like I could ask, but I'm kind of afraid of what kind of answer I would get. Yes, Chris? I mean, one is uh, release the, the energy that's stored in the capacitor, so it shouldn't be on the same time schedule like this one was. Like I see. Um, so if we are starting to expect that the time, this shape of V out would be different from shape of, uh, I didn't draw V in, V in, that might be the case. Um, but you will see that they are actually surprisingly synchronized. You know what, let me actually show you what it looks like and then we'll try to figure out if we can make sense of it using um, our equations. So let's see, my power supply is connected. Let me just connect my uh, voltage probe. So right now, so far, uh, channel B is flat because I haven't connected this. But when I connect it, now, hey, I get something that's not zero, but it's not nicely not zero. Let me expand the scale and see what it's supposed to be. Uh, OK, just so you know, the scale is so far extended that um, so. The scale for channel B is 10 times the scale for channel A. Uh, what's going on here? Why is this, uh, why is this so much uh, smaller? It might be worthwhile to take the time to write down equation that governs this 
and then we'll see if uh, we can figure out what we can do to make the signal for VR bigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to follow this exact same approach we took before. So we are using Kirchhoff's rules again. Um, let me. My purple is running out. Um, let me use my black. Um, so okay, I'm sort of trusting in Kirchhoff's, Kirchhoff's rules as general problem-solving approach for any kind of circuit. So uh, you know, for exam two, we are using this for battery and register circuits. Now what I'm doing is extending this to apply to circuits that contain capacitor, something that's not a register, but you know, it's a, the rules are kind of generic rule. There's no reason it shouldn't apply here. So let me write it down. Um, Kirchhoff's rules. So it, do, we, do I use a junction rule this time or no? Junction rule? There's still no junction here. It's just still one loop. So all right, so I'm just going to use the loop rule. Um, loop rule says, if you go around the loop, adding up change of voltage, that will add up to zero. So I guess I better define my loop. So oh, I first should define my current. So I'll say my current goes this way. And my loop, I'll pick the same loop, at, loop I picked last time. So loop that goes this way. This is my loop. So starting at this point, I go across the power supply, across the register, and then the capacitor. So all right, I guess I'll just uh, um, add them up. So as I go across the power supply, I gain voltage of V in. Um, as I go across the register, I get a voltage drop of current times register. Yes, yeah, that part hasn't changed. Minus IR, uh, this next part is new. What kind of voltage change do I get as I go across a capacitor? Let me, huh? I was looking at the formulas. Yeah, so you are going to be using this relationship here. This is the defining relationship for capacitor. And one of the reason all, so you will, when you look at these expressions carefully, you will see that all of them contain an expression for voltage. So that's what really these expressions are for. They, for each of the circuit elements, they tell you how to get the voltage difference across each of the circuit element so that you can use, express the circuit element in Kirchhoff's rules. So, um, It's all change in voltage across the element. Yeah. So now I need to figure out the sign. So it's going to be either plus or minus. Solve that for VC. I get um, Q, amount of charge on the capacitor. That's new. Over capacitance C. So that brings me back to the loop. That should equal 0. Um, I should spend some amount of time picking, is this going to be plus or minus? Yes. You know, sign error, whatever. So um, I guess this is the exercise I like to go through. Uh, imagine I have these positive charges flowing this way. As they start to accumulate, if my capacitor wasn't charged, um, which end of the two uh, plates end up being positive? Bottom one ends up being positively charged? Top. Yeah, yeah visualize positive charges are moving. Sorry. They get blocked by this plate. They accumulate on the top plate. Positive charges accumulating on the top plate repels positive charges from below. So you get minus charges on the bottom. Yeah. So if you go across from this side down to here, is your change in voltage positive or negative? Negative, right? From positive plate to negative plate. I do like to define my things so that my Q comes out positive if that's what I was, you know, expect, if I get what I was expecting to get. So let me make the sign here negative. So that if everything's as expected, my Q is positive. Okay. So, so this is my equation. It's, um, 
how many unknowns do we have in this equation? Because I have to, at, like, at some point, I'd like to be able to solve this. Do we know how do you count to three? OK, let's go through one by one. Input voltage, known or unknown? Known, it better be. Current through it, known or unknown? Unknown, it's one of the things we are trying to solve for. Resistance, known or unknown? Better be known, or we don't know what kind of circuit we have. Minus Q, is that known or unknown? Charge on the capacitor, you are not really given it. So yeah, you don't know that. Um, capacitance, known or unknown? You should know it, otherwise you don't have a complete characterization of the circuit. So you know, I told you this is a 10 microfarad capacitor. And uh, you know, even if I didn't tell you what it was, you should treat this as an unknown. It's a parameter of the circuit. So I have one equation and two unknowns, which means it's not quite enough to actually solve this uh, equation. It's in contrast to this equation, which we could solve right away. So we need to do one more thing before we can actually start solving this. Songmin, what do we need to do? We need to express a relationship for current. What's the relationship for current? So this is the one of the few times where I'm actually going to write this down. Uh, I'm actually going to write down current I is the actual time derivative of Q. And now I can actually say this because it's, everything here is concretely defined. What I mean by Q, it's not some extract charge flowing in the wire. What I, mean, what I mean by Q is the actual charges that are accumulating on the capacitor. Right? And this is the expression for current through capacitor. Because whenever you have some amount of current coming in, your amount of charge stored will change at the rate given by the current. Okay? Yeah. So once all this is in a the circuit, then I can write down this relationship that some of you are wanting to write down that I wasn't writing down until now. So this is the thing that relates the, and now even though this is the current through the capacitor, because this is one loop, current through the capacitor is the current through the register. So I can use this even for this I here. So plugging that in, this is what I end up with. V in minus this, uh, or let me pull out R to the front, R times dQ dt minus 1 over C, Q is equal to 0. What kind of equation do you end up with? Anybody have seen this in your math classes? It's a differential equation. Uh, you ought to have studied, wait. I mean, even if you haven't taken differential equations, uh, math 3E, you should have seen this, something like this at some point in your calculus class because that's where you introduce separation of variables, how to solve simple differential equations like this. But yeah, this is differential equation. And um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. Um, so let me actually solve this for voltage difference across the capacitor. So uh, voltage difference across capacitor, you can actually get it from here. So V out, what it should be is amount of charge on the capacitor divided by C. Right? So voltage across the capacitor is proportional to the amount of charge on the capacitor. Um, let me kind of solve this for that. Then what I end up with is, um, so V out or Q over C is equal to here, V in minus um, DQ dt R times DQ dt. So this is the expression, right? Yes. And when I look at this, I see that, hey, I see that my V out, it should be more or less the same as my V in. Why isn't it? Like when I look at this, it's clearly about 10 times smaller or more. 
So why is my output voltage not comparable to my input voltage? What do you see in the equation that causes my output voltage to be not at all similar to my input voltage? Not quite capacitance, because capacitance is buried here. So it's not the capacitance. Resistance is one. Uh, one more thing that we can blame that's easier to change. Then where do you find the resistance? Yeah, in this uh, second term, right? So it's uh, the second term that's uh, subtracting from V in that I'm going to blame. Why my V out is not at all similar to V in. So that gives me some idea. So you know, changing resistance, that's a little bit harder. I'll do it later. Um, but I can try to change the rate of change of charge. So um, one control I have over rate is my period of the square wave. So if I make my frequency of square wave um, smaller, that'll change the rate of change um, smaller, right? So let me try that. So right now it's running at one kilohertz. Let me bring it down by a factor of 10. Oh, yeah, I have to change the time scale here to track the change. Oh, yeah, and I have to bring this back. Uh, let me put them on the same scale because they are eventually going to be start being comparable. All right. All right, so it's uh, now about half of the, so total change is about half of the total change of the square wave. Let me try even lower frequency. Okay, now that's making more sense. I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to see because it's such a low frequency that kind of have to blink through. But uh, imagine tracking this through a several trigger cycles. All right. So this thing that I'm drawing in black is the uh, input square wave, right? And let me trace the output um, signal across the capacitor in this shape. Yeah, they have the about the same full size. And you can actually see when your output voltage is actually equal to the input voltage. That's uh, whenever you somehow reach the state that this DQ dt is about equal to zero. Meaning the current flowing through the circuit is about equal to zero. Then your output voltage is equal to input voltage. Yeah. And it takes some time for the circuit to actually reach that state. When, I, when you run this at a low, uh, higher frequency, what was going on was that the, so, so um, you can describe this as the capacitor charging up. The capacitor is charging up from zero to some value. And what you are seeing is that as the capacitor charges up, um, uh, as the capacitor charges up, if you cut it off too soon, so if the square wave period is too short, then before a capacitor has time to fully charge up, you would suddenly cut it short. So stop it here, or you know, uh, maybe that's a little bit too drastic. If you cut it off here, then the capacitor will stop here, and then it'll start discharging uh, right away. And then, um, so when you cut it off like this, that's when you got the signal that looks like this for the capacitor. But when you wait long enough for this DQ dt to eventually go down to zero, or some, get something close to zero, then you see that the capacitor voltage reaches close to the uh, input voltage. So um, what we don't, wait, do we have time for this? Mm. Um, I guess we could actually put this off to your lab. Um, so now that we have this equation, uh, this is something we can do. So we have this equation, uh, differential equation, in terms of a single unknown, single dynamic unknown amount of charge on the capacitor as a function of time. So 
you can actually solve this differential equation.